happy to move on. It, it, it's just amazing to see how they're standing behind him during this slump, which, uh, like you said, is, is really getting to the point of comical. He, uh, he scored in practice today. And I, I, I read that the, uh, I was not at practice today, but I, I read that the players uh, sort of gave him an ovation, and <laughs> a, a huge deal of it. So maybe that'll get him going. Maybe, maybe that'll be exactly what he needs. Yeah, yeah, he's just due. At, at least he's shooting now. I mean, there were times where, where he'd have a breakaway and he'd, he'd look to see who, who he could pass it to. Like, Oh yeah. man, the shots are adding up like that. Yeah. That's a really good point because you do love to see that. And at some point, with a player of Phil Kessel's talent and and that shot that he has, which is for my money one of the best shots in the league, that that has to start going in. It absolutely has to start going in. Sidney Crosby mentioned it last night too. He said, you know, at, at some point. It, this he's just going to bust loose here and we can all feel it coming. So hopefully for the Penguins, that's pretty soon because they could really use that guy down the stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing about their little win streak they have going is, or at least point streak, I should say is they're, they've done it without two, um, and really, with, with Mata, three of four of their best defensemen. Um, Latang and, I mean, Dumoulin came back last night. But, you know, it, it's like when they got hurt, I heard Jack Johnson say it brought them all th- closer together because they realized, oh, no, what are we going to do now? We don't have our two best defensemen. What are we going to do? And they just, you know, they they, they came together as a team. Um it's 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 pretty amazing what they've been able to do without Latang. It, it really is. I I think anybody would have been hard pressed to see how good the results would have been without Latang and and also all these games without Dumoulin. But you know, I I, I made a joke, um, it, not really even a joke, but a comment after that happened of, oh, here's here's where they band together, and you know, here's here's where they make the playoffs, and you know, just go on a tear just despite everybody, and it, it kind of feels like to me that's the time honored Penguins way. You've seen it time and time again. They they lose a major player, you know, they lose Sidney Crosby for a long period of time. If getting Malkin steps up, they lose Malkin for a period of time. Crosby steps up. They lose, you know, they, they just get player after player after player injured. And and now they've added, you know, they, they had all of those guys down and then next game they lose Brian Rust and Chad Ruedel in the same game. And you're like, how is this even possible? These guys just keep dropping like flies. And I think with every loss, they just, the resolve grows of, okay, we, we just have to band together and get through this. And, and I think part of it is, you know, is really that sort of us against the world resolve and mentality. But I also think part of it is it forces the Penguins on a practical level to simplify their game which is probably the best thing that could happen to them. Because, exactly. Yeah. You know, they're, they're this team that just overthinks when they have all of this talent out there. And Chris Letang is one of the most typical guys you can think of who, who has been guilty of it in the past. You have this incredible collection of talent out there overthinking okay, I'm going to make this stretch pass, you know, to nowhere that's going to end up going the other way. And, um, it, it's just the kind of thing that that they do when they have all of that talent. And I think they get a little, you know, maybe a little too wrapped up in their own abilities. And when you don't have that and you just have to play the simple game, look how that's going for them. So I really yeah. think that maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Exactly. I was going to say that. And uh, another uh, maybe – Blessing in disguise is um is well Jack Johnson seems to be a lot better um now that he's on his 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 the so, his natural side and Good Branson seems to be uh fitting in pretty well. Yeah, you know I I really think it, it, Good Branson 
came in sort of not getting a chance right off the get-go. You know, people just, you know, immediately, okay, we, we've we seen tape of this guy. He's terrible. Here's exactly what he's going to do in Pittsburgh, like he's done everywhere else. And, it, and when you hear words from Jim Rutherford, like the words that struck me as sort of the, the alarm where I got concerned was he was asked a question at the press conference when he acquired the Branson. He was asked, okay, so when you look at this guy's analytics over the years, they, they are very unkind, you know, and what, when you look at that, how do you analyze that player? What is it that you're looking for from that player when you decide to acquire him despite that? And Rutherford said, well, with a player like that, um, that's not what you're looking for, which reads to me like, we don't care. <laughs> like, we just disregard all that. And, and yeah. you kept your head like, oh, no, oh, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there, uh, there are people on every team in hockey in, in that business for a reason. It's because you know, the, the stats don't lie. <laughs> right. Right. If you have a really long history from a certain player saying that they, you know, sort of consistently play a certain way, it probably the pattern is probably there for a reason. So um, I, I think of these poor guys who are on the stats team for the Penguins hearing that and just think their, their heads probably explode <laughs> when right. they hear Jim Rutherford make a comment like, well, we, we don't care about that when we look at this guy. But, um, and then he talks about <laughs> heart and grit and character and you, you just hear all these words and say, Oh no, what, what's he doing? You know? So, yeah. If, 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 if I'm running the <laughs> analytics for, for the Penguins, I'm like, so should I just take the week off? Do you even care what I think? Or <laughs> should should I just you know should I just resign because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does it even matter? <laughs> what am I doing here? Yeah. Uh, but you know so so you hear that and you really cringe. But I have to say with the uh, you're you are right. First of all, that that Jack Johnson has been you you can't deny that he's been noticeably better since he's been on his correct side. He's seems to be a pretty good pairing with Justin Schultz, uh, which has been, you know, that's like a two for one comeback with, with Schultz getting back into the lineup, you get Schultz back and hopefully you get something out of Jack Johnson that you weren't getting before, um, which is, you know, maybe a, a little, um, a little less of a liability of a defenseman than he was because that was really the concern was, was how often he seemed to be on the ice for those, this sort of glaring errors. And I think Justin Schultz has really calmed down that part of his game. And Erica Branson, with the exception of last night when he was on the uh, bad end of that sort of unfortunate tip in on that first goal, uh, I haven't noticed really any instances of him looking like, what he was advertised to be before he came to Pittsburgh. So maybe that's just luck so far and the team being on a, a hot streak, but uh, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps he's found a good spot for himself, but uh, so far so good there. And, you know, one thing when, when you hear the Penguins opponents, like uh, I, I think what, what really struck me when Jim Rutherford made that deal was that I don't know if you see him make that deal if guys like Chris Letang and Sidney Crosby are out there trying to get into fights in the previous couple of games, yeah. and, you know, against the San Jose Sharks, you have, you have Crosby go down on the ice backwards with no helmet. You know, you have Chris Letang have what happened to him in Philadelphia in the outdoor game, a guy with a concussion history and a neck injury. Now he's out with that apparent neck injury. And I think you just look at it and say, uh, maybe these aren't the guys I want standing up for this team. And, and so I'm really not surprised he went out and said, okay, well, we let Ryan Reeves go and uh, maybe it's time to do that again. Yeah. And, and good Branson apparently has a history of uh, fighting uh, Tom Wilson. So, <laughs> so we'll see, but there yeah, I, it, it's, yeah, I, 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 I heard them ask Latang about that, and he said, "Yeah, I stuck up for my teammate, and I I do it again." Like, yeah, okay, that's, that's that's nice, but that's yeah. So don't do that. <laughs> yeah, 
please don't do that anymore, especially especially with your history, you know, with with your uh, first of all, the type of player you are. Please don't do that. And secondly, with your medical history, please don't do that. You know, it, it really makes you cringe. But but then you hear what I was going to say before was the you hear a comment like apparently Evander Kane made a comment. Did you hear about this? I heard that. Yeah. Kane? About, oh, well, who on this team's going to do anything about it? Yeah. And, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I'm not saying that's an excuse to go out and acquire, you know, a tough guy. Uh, and by all means, if you go out and acquire a tough guy, he better be able to play because there is no space in this league anymore for tough guys who can't play. Um so hopefully he's got the right guy in Branson. But uh, I think when you hear that, I mean, I'm not surprised when you're Jim Rutherford, if your blood boils a little bit, like oh, yeah. I hear that and my blood boils a little bit like, oh man, the disrespect, you know, that, that's, that's terrible. If you have teams thinking, okay, nobody here is going to stop me. That's, that's no good. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean that's that's the reason they got Ryan Reeves. It's you know, gosh, just the the the, the beatings the Penguins took like physical beatings during those playoff runs were ridiculous. And the, if the refs aren't going to do anything, it's like okay, fine, we'll take matters into our own hands. And uh, you know, you know, Reeves didn't work, so yeah, we'll see how this is. But it's interesting that he put Pedersen and Goodbranson together. They're both giant trees they're both like sequoias out there <laughs> what do you do did they just form like form like a chain and say okay you you can't pass we're, we're forming a wall around us you i dare you to pass around us with, with their oh, giant reach uh, that, that pairing's hilarious and then at one point last night i noticed gabranson on the ice at the same time as uh, nick bukestad and and same thing I, I i was like oh my god those are some very very large men out there <laughs> and I, I you know i i guess it, it's funny because a couple of years ago the penguins were setting the gold standard in this league for speed uh, you know it doesn't matter even if you have a bunch of small guys like connor sherry you know just it's speed and and that's what's going to kill you is speed and skill and and now it feels like they're almost taking a step toward okay if we're a little slower it's okay we're, we're we're going to get size or, you know, we're going to, we're going to get some bigger guys who are, you know, maybe a little bit stronger and get, can sort of bring that a um, little bit grittier of a presence. So uh, maybe, maybe that's the Penguins acknowledging that they're going to play a slightly different way. And I, I do think they have started to adjust their game a little to play a slightly different way because I, I think they get that they have perhaps lost a step in comparison to some of the other teams in this league now. But I also think that the Penguins showed to me last night when, when you watch that game, the Penguins, when they have to be a speed team and against Montreal too, who's a really fast team, I think they're able to keep up with those teams when they really, you know, sort of put their focus on, being a fast team and you know they're, they're going to have to expend the effort and energy to do that but I, I still think they have the ability to do that too so it, it's an interesting time of evolution for the penguins trying to figure out what their identity is and what their game's going to be i think i think they're trying to be all things i mean yeah. you know because there's you know look what he did look what sullivan did um against montreal it's like well they have a fast team so i'm going to put uh, McCann up there with uh, with Crosby and, and Gensel and have a, have a really uh, fast line. So um, yeah. I, I think that's what they want to do is maybe, you know, change change things up depending on the uh, the opponent. So we will uh, we'll see how that goes, which is Our, actually tremendous, because how often did you hear? Oh, Dan Bowsma can't make adjustments. You know? Yeah. Just to to other teams, and you know, if Mike Sullivan can adjust to other teams and can tweak his lineup to fit what best meets that opponent, how great would that be going into the playoffs? So it's pretty exciting to see your coach do that. I think. Yeah. Now, so and, and McCann was up there with uh, on that first line last night, also, um, and and Zach Aston Reese is with Malkin and Kessel. Do you see that continuing or I don't know if uh, if uh, Zach's time might be up on that second line? 
I don't know. I, I think Zach Aston Reese is, I think what they're looking for there is sort of the Patrick Hornquist presence because, you know, Zach Aston Reese really does have the potential to be that kind of player to, you know, chip in some goals from those areas in front of the net, but also bring sort of that, that presence to the line where he is opening up space for the other players on that line. So I, I think that's what they're looking for from him. And it, it, 